Brothers and sisters, good afternoon. Welcome to join our online and on-site Sunday service. On behalf of our English congregation, I extend my warmest to wel welcome to everyone, especially those who are online. I hope after this crisis, we all can face uh, to face to worship our Lord all together. Okay, thank you. Okay, first thing first. Okay, now let's welcome the newcomer. And okay, on my left hand side, I saw a young gentleman over there. Would you mind introduce yourself, your name, which grade you are in, who bring you to our faith community? Grab you here. Okay. <laughs> okay, even. Oh, give me a big hand. Oh, granddad. Granddad is a Pastor Albert. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone I miss? Okay. Yes. Oh, I see. Now, all the gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, I met you in the morning. Hi, I'm Bruce. And I'm okay. Welcome, Uncle Sue. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, we are going to read our monthly scripture three times. The first two times is uh, the first and second time we are, we are going to read in English, and the third time we are going to in Chinese pinyin. Okay, yes, read all together. Okay, Lord, everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Book of Matthew, chapter seven, verse twenty-one. Lord, everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. Now we are going to read in Pinyin Chinese, okay? Fan Ching Fu, Zua, Zua, Deren, Buren Do Jin Teng Guo, Wei Do Jun Xin, Wo Fu Zi Deren, Cai Ren Jin Chu. Now I'm going to hand the following time to Johnny to make some announcement. Okay. All right, here are your announcements for the 28th of May, 2023. Uh, starting with the congratulations to our recent high, well, soon to be high school graduates. Uh, please do come next week because we'll have a special benediction for you. Uh, during our combined service. So look forward to that. Next is an announcement for our Sunday school. Auntie CG will be leading the discipleship uh, course this week. So definitely stick around after service if you're interested in that. Uh, next, a reminder that our baptism class is over Zoom on July 2nd. So if you want to be baptized uh, this Thanksgiving in October, uh, do show up. And uh, if you want to sign up, contact Mr. Pong. And next, a couple of reminders of previous announcement items we've talked about. First is the July 4th, uh, June 4th Tiananmen Square Massacre Memorial. It'll be at uh, the Serbi campus held on June 3rd at 7.30 p.m. If you need a ride, you can contact Mr. Pong or Auntie CJ. And because of this event, we will have no Gabriel Fellowship uh, that week. So next week, no Gabriel Fellowship. Next is our church gospel camp. It'll be running from June 16th to the 18th. Uh, to, to next week, actually, is the deadline to sign up for the church gospel camp. Uh, so if you're interested at all, contact Mr. Pong or Auntie CJ. And as a result of this camp, there will be no fellowship on the 17th. So remember those two dates, next week, June 3rd and June 17th, no Gabriel fellowship. Uh, lastly, is a reminder for our AGM. It's going to be next week as well. And there will be at supper afterwards, uh, which is $5 per person. Uh, please do sign up so we know how much food we need. And uh, there will be a sign up by email. But I'm sure there's someone you can talk to as well. And I do believe today is the last day to sign up for the AGM dinner. So, you know, if you haven't signed up, don't expect any food for yourself if you do show up next week. Uh, that concludes our announcements. Now it's time for the Bible verse memorization. This week's challenge comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. Uh, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. As well as uh, the shorter catechism, question and answer number 80, what does the 10th commandment require? 
The Tenth Commandment requires us to be completely satisfied by our own sta- uh, completely satisfied in our own status in life, and to have a proper loving attitude toward others and their possessions. Okay, do you have any takers of this week's challenge? Anyone at all? Okay, Joshua, very good. Very good. Anyone else? Leslie, okay. Okay. Anyone else for this week? Okay, Helen. Anyone else? Uh, I saw Winston first. Johnny? Anyone else? Okay, Dylan. Nobody clap. <laughs> uh, okay, anyone else for this week's challenge? All right. If there's no one else, let's read next week's challenge together from James chapter 3, verses 14 and 6 to 16. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. What does the Tenth Commandment forbid? The Tenth Commandment forbids any dissatisfaction with what belongs to us, envy or grief at the success of others, 
and all improper desire for anything that belongs to someone else. Now is the time for worship. Okay, call to worship. Please stand up and listen God's word. I'm going to invite uh, brothers to read the odd numbers words and the sisters read the even number. Okay, uh, brothers. Oh, my strength, I will watch for you. For you, O oh God, are my fortress. Kill them, Lord. This my prayer will forget. Make them to by your power and bring them down. O oh Lord, our shield. Consume them in wrath. Consume them till they are no more, that they may know that God rules over Jacob to the end of the earth. Sinner. They wander about for food and grow if they do not get their fuel. But I will take up your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love to the Lord. For you have redeemed me from the fortress and the refuge from the day of my threat. Oh, my strength, I will sing praises to you. For you, O oh God, are my fortress, the God who shows me steadfast love. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, what a privilege, what an honor, now that we are all come together to worship you and taste your abundant grace and mercy. Lord, yeah, we all know that it's all uncertainty. We don't know what will happen tomorrow, even next hour. Lord, in this world, we are no longer like if there is a rosy picture in this world. He says, as you described, there's so many enemies around us and want to attack us and slaughter us. The Satan never stopped tempting us. Lord, where we are, can win this battle? It's on the surface. It seems we are fighting a losing battle. But by your strength and courage, we are sure we'll win. We'll win this battle. Lord, mercy on us. Give you, let me taste your abundant grace and mercy. Lord, as you say, oh my strength, I will sing praise to you for you, oh God, are my fortress, the God who sold me steadfast love. What encouragement. What this wonderful world. It gives us a real courage, real faith, so that we can fight back. Lord, let's taste your abundant grace and follow you wholeheartedly and diligently daily. Not you know our weakness, our shortcomings. Uh, very often, we deliberately turn our back against you. Yes, we do it in tension, Lord, but you still forgive us. You still mercy on us. And it is a mystery. We don't understand why we, you love us so much that you are well willing to sacrifice on the cross. We never understand. Lord, that's that we will enjoy your love, your mercy, your grace daily. We pray in your precious name. Amen. For our first song, let's sing Holy, Holy, Holy. <clears throat> Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee. 
casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which were and are and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee. Perfect in power, in love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy work shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Please be seated. Now it's the time to com- uh, for confession. Listen to the call to confession from, from Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 8. Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Let's take the next minute to confess our sins before the Lord. Lord God, when we think about your Son, Jesus Christ, and the sacrifice he made on the cross, it's so unbelievable that the very Son of God, who is is equal to God, loved us so much, he came down to earth to die for us. But Lord, we confess that we are unworthy and that we do not love you as you have loved us. And instead, we love our sin, we love our filthy ranks so much that we cannot let go of them, that we cling to them, hold on to them, when you have demonstrated your love to the point of death for us. So Lord, today we ask you to open our eyes and to heal our hearts so that we may see you for who you are, that we may feel your love that you have showered upon us. May May it cause us to mourn and turn to you. Let us give up the, the worth the things that we cling to and receive your abundant grace and your favor that you wish to show to us that, we're, our, that we cannot grab because our hands are so busy with the worth the things that we love instead. So Lord, this is our earnest prayer today that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray as the Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing our second song, The Power of the Cross. Oh, to see the dawn of the darkest day 
Christ on the road to Calvary. Tried by sinful men, torn and beaten then, nailed to a cross of wood. This the power of the cross. Christ became sin for us, took the blame, for the wrath we stand forgiven at the cross. Oh, to see the pain written on your face, bearing the awesome weight of sin. Every bitter thought, every evil deed, crowning your blood-stained brow. This the power of the cross. Christ became sin for us, took the blame for the wrath we stand forgiven at the cross. Now the daylight flees, now the ground beneath quakes as its maker bows his head. Curtain torn in two, dead are raised to life, Finish the victory cry. This the power of the cross. Christ became sin for us. Took the blame for the wrath we stand forgiven at the cross. Oh, to see my name written in the wounds, for through your suffering I am free. Death is crushed to death, life is mine to live, one through your selfless love. This the power of the cross, Son of God, slain for us. What a love, what a cost, we stand forgiven at the cross. Christians, what is it that we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Today's sermon is titled The Applause of Heaven, and it comes from 1 Corinthians chapters 3, verses 10 to 15, which I will read for you now. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 to 15. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than which is that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, disclose it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. 
And these are the words of the Lord. Well, good afternoon. There's a fascinating story at the end of the Gospel of Luke. Probably you know, many of you know the story or remember the story. It's a story of these two people who are on their way to Emmaus. They've been followers of Jesus Christ, and, uh, but today was not a good day. You see, they were discouraged, they were disheartened, they were disappointed, probably a little bit confused. I mean, they thought that the rabbi that they had followed was, in fact, the Messiah. I mean, after all he had done and everything that he said, his incredible teaching, I mean, they were sure that he would be deliver them from the Roman domination and would usher in the nation of Israel to its former glory. But now, this rabbi was dead. As they're walking along, all of a sudden this mysterious stranger joins them. The stranger engages them in a conversation. They told him about this, this person, this rabbi back in Jerusalem, uh, this person that they thought was the Messiah, but now he had been crucified, he was dead. Yeah, some women had gone to the tomb where they had buried his body, but when they got there, there was no body. Someone said he was alive. Dead person, not alive. They didn't know what to think. Now, here is what I find very instant, uh, interesting about this story. Jesus doesn't. Jesus doesn't immediately jump right in and say, hey, relax, I'm that rabbi. I'm Jesus. I was raised from the dead. That's me. No, he doesn't do that. But what he does do, he goes back to the scriptures he goes back to the Hebrew scriptures, the scriptures that they had probably heard many times, that they would have heard many times from their religious leaders, and he shares with them the story in a different way. They, for the very first time, hear this story differently. And what happens? They get it. Their eyes are opened. For the first time, they realize that things were not as they assumed they were, that Jesus was actually alive, and that moment basically changed everything for them. Now you're saying, why did I tell you that story? Because I think there are times when you and I, we need to hear the story differently. We hear the story so often, but I think there are times where we need to hear the story differently so that we actually get it. So that our eyes are open perhaps to a new way of looking at our relationship with God. I hope that that's gonna happen in a sense today. And I hope you're going to be encouraged as you think about what we're going to be talking about. Be encouraged to keep on keeping on in spite of what is going on in your life. I've called the talk the Apostle of Heaven. So I want you to use your imagination today, okay? Uh, let, let's pretend. Pretend that you and I are in heaven. Now, I know that's kind of hard, being in a situation like this with these four walls. I mean, it doesn't feel like heaven, right? And I don't know what kind of picture you have of heaven, but this isn't it. Okay, but anyway, let, let's just pretend that you're in heaven. You got it? You're there. I'm there. Wow. I can't believe it. I'm here. Heaven. I made it. I mean, I'm not sure what I would have thought heaven would be like when I got there, but uh, this isn't anything that I thought it would be. Yeah, I, I remember reading that passage about the day of the Lord and thinking and wondering and musing and kind of reflecting on what that would be like when the day of the Lord happened. And it's happened exactly like they said it would. I mean, it's kind of like I was riding my e-bike and all of a sudden, zoom, I was up there in heaven. It's incredible. It happened exactly like it said it would. Anyway, if I remember correctly, he said he would meet us in the air. He hasn't shown up yet. Wonder why. Come on, Albert, relax. It's okay. Nothing to worry about, right? Okay. Well, uh, I remember when I was back on Earth. Somehow this moment seemed so far away, seemed so distant, seemed like it would never happen. I mean, there were days life was tough, right? I mean, there was obstacles and there were pressures and there were strained relationships and there were COVID-19 type of things and hard work, few returns. And I wasn't sure he even wanted to go on. He couldn't wait for the day when Jesus Christ would come, but he never did. And I must confess, I think I kind of gave up. I never thought it would ever happen. But here I am. Here we are. White robes, new bodies, 
Everything's so beautiful, excited, thrilled, delighted, no tears, no pain, no viruses, no cancers, no dementia, everything just good and beautiful. And I remember Jesus talking about preparing a place. I wonder what my place is going to be like. I wonder what Jesus has prepared for me. And now, now just like the Bible said, I am going to stand before him. To be honest, I'm kind of scared. I mean, this is judgment day, right? What's he going to say? What can he say? I mean, ever since those days in my Sunday school class, when I heard those words, do not be deceived, God does not mock, and man reaps what he sows, I wonder, what am I going to reap? Wood? Hay? Stubble? Gold? Silver? And then I remember the Bible saying, for the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's word with his angels, and he will reward each person according to what they have done. According to what they have done. I always, well, what does it matter now? What, what difference does it make what I thought, what I did? This is reality. I can't hide from it now. I can't go back. I guess this is it. Oh, I think I know what's going to happen. That passage in Corinthians, you know, I think it was chapter 3, was it? It said something about just barely in, kind of escaping the fire, just barely getting through. Yeah, that's probably me. I mean, why try to hide it, Albert? Just squeaked in. Everything's going to be burned up. Nothing left worthy of reward. After all, I was just a... Not, nothing spectacular about my occupation. What I did. Oh, sure. Husband. Father. No big deal. Man, I wish I would have done something great. I mean, I remember my pastors talking about these, these, these great individuals, you know, the Luther and Calvin and Spurgeon and Moody and, you know, MacArthur and Swindoll and Lucado and Hybels and Mother Teresa. I mean, those are people who did great things, right? But who was I anyway? I really had not done anything compared to those individuals. Oh, well. No point in feeling sorry for myself now. It's too late anyway. But man, I, I wish, I wish I had. I remember back there, you know, uh, Sunday, Sunday back there, 19, I think it was 1994. I remember sitting in church. Don't remember when I was, you know, 26, 27, 28, something like that. And there was something that was stirring deep within my soul. The Holy Spirit, at least I, I think it was the Holy Spirit, he was nudging me. He was prompting me to step out, take a risk. The Holy Spirit was just really convicting me that day. And I remember I wanted to, I really wanted to make that decision to become a holy daughter, follower of Jesus Christ. But the timing didn't seem right. I mean, someday it would, but not now. I mean, I needed to establish myself in my career. I needed to get some school debts paid. I wanted to buy a house. My wife kept pushing me. She wanted a family. And my friends, they were taking all these wonderful holidays. I wanted to take those wonderful holidays too. And so I kind of ignored what the Holy Spirit was prompting me to do. And back then, well, you know, I mean, I really didn't feel spiritually qualified anyway. So, I mean, I couldn't say yes. I was, I was too young. You know, I, I need to learn to handle my insecurities and my fears. I didn't have any theological training. If someone asked me what I believe, I don't know what I would have said and when it came to prayer and how to pray. I mean, I've never really graduated out of kindergarten. And so I remember telling the Holy Spirit that day, no thanks, no thanks. Someday, yeah, someday, but, but right now, I've got other priorities. Anyway. Too late now. Well, I, I did try once. You know, I, they needed someone to teach some junior high kids. And I tried. But I don't think I ever got through to them. After all, I was just, uh, as far as I know, none of those kids ever became pastors or missionaries or teachers or Bible school professors. At least none that I know of. Oh, yeah, there was one time. They asked me to serve on the deacon board. Don't know why, but they asked me to serve on the deacon board. We didn't have elders in our church, but I didn't live in the world of 
you know, core values and mission statements, and they were talking about the role of women in the church, and there was no way I was going to touch that topic, so I don't want any part of that. Yeah, I really tried to be a good person. I, I, I tried to live with integrity. I mean, that doesn't mean I didn't make mistakes, but when I did, I always tried to make things right. I worked hard at being honest. I gave people a fair deal. I wasn't greedy, didn't take advantage of people who didn't understand or know the ins and outs of the trade, but most people I knew tried to do that. Didn't really have anything to do with being a Christian. And I suppose, in a way, I just did it to kind of make sure nothing would come back to me, you know, that I would never get sued. I know that if I didn't do right, eventually, somewhere, somehow, things would get back to me. At least that's what my dad always told me. I mean, it really didn't have anything to do with being a fully devoted follower of Jesus. It just made good business sense. You know, why not? It wasn't a heaven or hell kind of issue. It wouldn't give me any brownie points with God. I, I guess I would have to say that I was a pretty average kind of guy. Now, as I think about it, average doesn't, doesn't sound too good, does it? I wonder what Jesus thinks of average. Maybe if I tried harder, I could have been above average, you know, excellent and passionate, enthusiastic, honor roll kind of person, but I was pretty average. Anyway, here I am, the judgment. I assume that Jesus is going to show up pretty soon. I wonder, what's a guy supposed to say anyway? Ah, Jesus, I would love to serve as your CEO. You know, with the experience I've had on earth, I think that would be good. No, I can't say that. That sounds far too much like James and John who want to sit on the right and the left side of Jesus, right? Besides, I can't even, you know... I can count on one hand the number of people who I led to Christ. I don't deserve special privileges. I remember how not having the privilege of leading people to Jesus used to, to bother me. And from time to time, I'd pull out that little track to four spiritual laws, and, and I would tell people what I believed, and I joined an alpha group, but nobody came, and so... I never saw much fruit. I mean, nothing like the 30, 60, 100-fold that Jesus talked about in that story, the parable of the sower. Yeah, you know, I never really did understand that parable. You know, throwing out the seed and then getting that great return. I, I never did get that. I mean, maybe there were four, five people at the most who chose to follow Jesus. Sort of lost touch with them. I don't know where they ended up. I wonder if they're here somewhere? I wonder where they are. Oh well, here I am. It's kind of too late to do anything about that now. I don't know, what is he going to say? What could he say? Welcome. Glad to have you, Mr. Albert. Have a nice eternity. I wonder if he's going to sugarcoat my below average life. Well, maybe Maybe it wasn't so below average. I mean, uh, you know, when I compare myself to 33% of people in church who never show up all summer, I was there at least two times. <laughs> Most of the time I liked church. There were some preachers, well, let's just say I did not have the gift of listening when they were preaching, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like some of you, right? I worship in my church is pretty good. I like to read the Bible. I love the way Jesus kind of did a number on people in his day. I love the way that he had them second-guessing what was going on and praying. Well, I probably could have prayed a lot more, but at least I prayed. And, yeah, I, you know, maybe I wasn't a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ, but at least I had something of a spiritual walk with God. I mean, there were times where I felt really close, that my life with God was real and vital and alive, but judgment. Why can't this judgment thing be a group thing? You know, where everybody gets the trophy, no one gets special attention, no one is singled out. Why does it have to be each one? Each one is going to stand before the judgment seat. 
why can't this kind of be a group thing, you know, where we would just kind of pass over some of the stuff that I thought, said, and did? I'm uh, starting to feel a little bit warm. Doesn't Evan have air conditioning? Well, maybe, maybe it's, maybe I'm just uptight for what God is going to say. I, I wonder what he's going to say. I mean, I never made the headlines. I think I got my name in the denominational church paper two times when I was born, when I got married, and that's about all the press I ever got. I never wrote a great story and sang a great solo, went on a mission trip, or discipled a super evangelist. And, and people in my small group, they never seem to do much better than me. I mean, we, we all just kind of live decent, quiet lives. Oh, well. What's the point of getting down on myself? I just have to take what comes. Something my dad used to say, chin up, son. Oh, look, look, there's my mom and dad. Man, it feels so good to know my mom is here because I always had some questions about whether or not she would make it. I mean, I, I, I used to talk about Jesus with her all the time, and I kind of pushed Jesus on her and talked to her about accepting Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, but she never said the words like I think she should have said, and so I never was quite sure. It's so good. So good to see her here. And my dad, yeah, wow. It's neat to see he made it. I mean, I had real concerns about whether or not he would make it. I mean, he never talked about having a crisis, born-again experience like I had. And I remember always thinking, I guess that means he must not have real faith, but I guess he did. I never actually saw him read his Bible. And my wife, my kids, they're here too. Wow, isn't that great? I mean, what would I have done if my kids had not made it? I'm so thankful for that youth pastor who poured his life into my kids, for that Sunday school teacher who loved my son regardless of his doubts and his cynicism and all his constant questioning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And they're, they're all here, and I'm here. Yeah. Maybe Jesus will not be able to say to me, well done and get good and faithful servant, but at least I'm here. I mean, I'm part of this kingdom forever and ever. This is incredible. It's never, never, never going to end. Hallelujah. Is there someone here by the name of Albert? Is there an Albert in the group? Hey, relax, man. It's okay. Uh, you're here, aren't you? Nothing to worry about, I think. Wow. This is incredible. Look, you, you, can, you can see right through that person. You can see their motives. You can see their thoughts. You can see their heart. It's all there right from the beginning of their life to the end of their life. You can see it all. How does God do that anyway? Oh, look, there's, there's Paul, the apostle. Well done, Paul. You said you wanted to know Christ. There wasn't anything you would rather do than know Christ. Well, you did it. Well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah, and there's, there's Abraham. Man, he still looks so young. He probably could have had another kid. Well done, Abraham. By faith, you responded willingly to what I asked you to do. By faith, you left your family. You wandered, wandered into another country, even though you didn't have a clue where you were going. By faith, when I tested you and your, with your son Isaac, you climbed that mountain. You took the knife. You were ready to make a big sacrifice just trusting always that whatever I had in mind for you was what was best. Well done, Abraham. You have been a good and faithful servant. Yeah, and there, there's, there's Esther. Well done, Esther. I needed someone to step in at a special time in Israel's history, and you were that very special person. You risked your life to save my people. Well done, good and faithful servant. And, and there's, there's Mary right beside her. Mary, well done. Remember that touching moment by the tomb? You came down there to complete my burial, and you were all upset because my body was gone. I had to smile to myself a little bit. It seems like you wanted me there, even if I was dead. Then when I called, I will never forget your face. It was so neat. You were just blown away. Well done, Mary, good and faithful servant. And there, who, who's that guy anyway? Oh. That, that's Zephaniah, one of my favorite 
Older Testament prophets. I got to go see him because I got to thank him for the words that he shared that I relied on so often in my life. The Lord your God is with you. He's mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Man, I can't wait to go and tell him how much those words meant for me over the years. Thank you, Zephaniah. Zephaniah, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. Well done. Well done. Wow. They, they had all done so much, influenced so many lives, helped so many people, introduced so many people to Jesus. I, 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 wish, I wish I could say that. I wonder, what is he going to say to me? Just made it, eh? Stop that, Albert. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Can't do anything about it now. Anyway, relax. Yeah, maybe you just barely made it like escaping by fire, but you're here. That's what matters. Oh, oh, look at all those people coming from the judgment seat of Christ. They're coming back so happy, so excited, so satisfied, so content. And some of them are even dancing. They obviously weren't Baptists. <laughs> Nobody's complaining. Nobody's arguing that they were treated right at the judgment. The judgment is perfect. I wonder when he opens the book on me. I think I'm kind of feeling like report card day, grade three. Remember how excited I was? No, maybe how uptight I was because if I got a bunch of satisfactories, you know what my parents would do? Well, no, think, no point in thinking about that now. Albert, come here, this way. I guess that's me. Here goes. What happens, happens. Here we go. Uh, you look a little uptight. Somewhat anxious? Kind of worried? Well, wh what would you expect? This is the judgment seat, isn't it? Uh, let's just get it over with. Come on. Albert, let's get a couple of things straight here. Remember, remember what I said. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Remember, no condemnation. No need to be all uptight right now. Remember what I said? And God is love. And all who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we, we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. What day is that? The day of judgment. But we can face him with confidence because we, we live like Jesus here in this world. Albert, listen, you have always, always been the object of my love and affection. Do you think I have changed the way I feel about you now, now that you are in heaven? Um, I'm sorry, Jesus. Somehow there are probably a lot of things like that, things I never did get right back on earth, but, I mean, you know what my parents were like. I mean, they just messed me up so badly. You couldn't expect me to feel safe and secure growing up in that kind of environment that I grew up in, can you? I mean, it's not my fault. Give me a break. Albert, I've decided to call on a few people to help me with your assessment, just to help all of us understand what kind of building materials you used while you were on Earth. You know, that wood, hay, stubble, or gold, silver kind of thing. You, you're going to bring in some witnesses? people who knew me very well? Yes. The first person I would like to call is your son. My son? No. Not, not my son. I mean, we had a lot of fights when he was growing up. We had a lot of arguments. We didn't get along very well. Not my son. I mean, not in front of all these people. It's okay. He has some things he would like to share with you. He would like to talk about those piggyback rides, the hockey rinks you built for him back in Manitoba when it was 20 degrees below zero, those times you came to watch him play ball, the times where he made some bad decisions, but you kept on believing in him. He wants to talk about those times where you could have really gotten down on him, but instead forgave him and encouraged him to keep going. He wants to talk about how much it, it meant to him when you made yourself vulnerable and confessed your sin to him and asked him for his forgiveness. He wants to tell you how much he appreciated it when you shared your struggles, hurt, and pain. It really made him feel that you wanted him to be part of your life. He wants to tell you what it meant to him to be hugged 
when there was very little in him that was huggable. He wants to tell you how much it meant to him to be loved unconditionally. Yeah, but, but every dad did those things. There was nothing special about those things. True, but you did it for him, and you did it because you loved him, wanted what was best for him. You, as his father, were the only person who could bless him, and he was so grateful for the many ways you did bless him. Well done, good and faithful dad. Oh, and I would also like to have your wife come and share a little of your story. Uh, Jesus, wait. My wife? Really? Do we, do we have to? I mean, this, this should be interesting. I mean, when I was on earth, I was a workaholic. Work was my idol. I, I hope she does not say anything about how often I chose work over her. I mean, if that's what she talks about, I'm in deep trouble. No crowns for me. I mean, Jesus, you talked about preparing mansions, but if you give her a chance to talk, I might get a 400-square-foot basement condo or a shack down at the bottom of the mountain. Uh, Jesus, my wife, I mean, can't we just kind of fast-forward this part of my life? Do you, do you have to bring her in? I want to bring her in because she wants to talk about how much she appreciated those times that you just held her and loved her when she was tired, discouraged, and when you held her and didn't ask her anything more. She wants to tell you how much, well, you remember the time you came home from Promise Keepers and you sat down with her and said, honey, tell me how I can be a better husband to you. You listened carefully to what she shared and then followed through on being a better husband. She wants to tell you how much, well, as a man, she understood how hard it was for you to consistently pray with her but she appreciated how you faced your fears and tried to be faithful. She wants to just share how grateful she was that you were not threatened by her success, how you penetrated her life and encouraged her to discover the fullness of her God-given femininity, and how when the kids were small you said, you know, I really don't need to play floor hockey Monday nights. Why don't you make arrangements and go out with the girls on Monday nights, and I'll take care of the kids. And she wants to talk about the time you were having problems and you weren't too proud to go get some counseling. And she just appreciated how you would often let her into your world. You're not afraid of being open and vulnerable and transparent. Then when she was diagnosed with cancer, you were with her all through that difficult time. I mean, really with her. But Jesus, there, uh, there's a lot of other stuff she could talk about, like the times when I emotionally abused her, avoided conversation, wasn't patient, hurt her deeply. I, I, I'm not proud of those times, you know. Yes, I know. But remember what I said. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. It seems you are not too proud to do that, confessing on a regular basis. So today, you did not have to worry about any of that stuff. It's in the past. Forgiven, forgotten, gone and buried. Well done, good and faithful husband. And Albert, remember Gordon? No, you would not remember him because you never did find out what his name was. But remember that time along Highway 1 when you were in a hurry to get to your appointment and there was this guy who was having car trouble and you stopped and went out of your way to get help for him. Remember he wanted to pay you for your troubles, but you said no, so he just threw some money in your car anyway? Yeah, I, I remember that. I don't remember the year it was, but I, mean, I felt so good, you know, just to know, like the Good Samaritan that you talked about, that's, that's how I felt. Well, just a couple of years later, and you don't know this, but when he was going through a crisis, I reminded him of your act of kindness and how you told him you were helping him because you were a follower of Jesus. And so when he was going through a crisis, guess where he went for help? He was prompted to seek out another Christian for help. In fact, I just saw Gordon here somewhere. He's here in heaven now, partly because of your act of kindness. Well done, good and faithful servant. You're kidding? He's here? I thought I would never see him again. Jesus, I must confess, I never thought that a little act of kindness had such huge eternal implications Jesus, thanks for telling me that story. It's just so encouraging. And, and remember that young couple from Montreal living in their car with their little baby, driving a car with a dead battery, 
And every evening they'd park it at the top of a hill so they could roll it down the hill and let out the clutch to get it started the next morning. Remember how you embraced them and their needs? Gave them a Bible. It was kind of funny. Remember, he opened the Bible and saw Job, and he needed a job, so he started to read it. Are, are they here too? No, unfortunately no. They never did decide to go with me. But well done, good and faithful servant. And remember those times you went to that nursing home and you put your arms around some of those people, people whose bodies could just not respond anymore? When you gave those people a hug, that was me. Jesus, wait. That, that was you? I don't get it. That was just somebody whose years had caught up with them. They just needed a little human touch, that's all. No, there was more going on than that, more going on than your touch. Remember when I was on earth and I told that story, Matthew wrote down what I said. Remember the story I told of being hungry and getting fed, being thirsty and getting something to drink, needing clothes and getting some clothes. Remember I, when I told that story, there was that group of people who said, but Jesus, we never saw you hungry or thirsty or needing clothes. What do you mean? Remember how I responded? I said, let me tell you the way it is. When you did one of those acts of kindness for someone who was overlooked, ignored, in trouble, that was me. You did it to me. Well done, good and faithful servant. Jesus, if I had only known, if I had only known your heart was touched by those simple acts I did, if I had known that when I loved and cared for people, when I shared with them, that all of those acts had eternal implications, if I had realized their eternal significance, I would have taken advantage of many, many more of those opportunities. Jesus, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I, I didn't realize. Somehow I thought, or at least I had the impression that the only time you were really pleased with me is if I opened my mouth and shared my faith, you know, actually told someone about Jesus. And I always found that very scary. But man, I wish I had realized that doing a simple act of kindness has such huge eternal implications. Well done, good and faithful servant. And Albert, do you know what else? It was, it was when you did that psalmist uh, what the psalmist talked about when he said be still and know that i am god albert i felt so honored when you would just sit and be quiet and just enjoy my presence and jesus says i uh, as i think about it now I, I i don't know why i was often being busy and felt that doing stuff was probably more important than just being quiet and enjoying your presence i i guess i would have to say my priorities are really messed up Albert, look at me. Uh, I'm not sure I can. I mean, you've been so generous and kind with your words. But Jesus, I know where I am. This, this is the judgment seat. When's the judgment part going to come? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of wood, hay, and stubble that's been a part of my life. When are you going to start talking about that? Albert, you are still having a hard time with the fact that everything I said about you while you were on earth is true. It really is. You need to understand and all the people who have joined you from Faith Chinese Church, they need to understand, you and each one of them, all of you are my beloved. Say, say that again. You are my beloved. I am your beloved. Albert, listen. There has never been any condemnation. Not then, not now. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But wait, I... I I thought this was the judgment seat of Christ. Yes, it is. But you need to remember, I removed your sins as far from us as the east is from the west. So what is happening here today has nothing, has nothing to do with your sin. I took care of all of your sin when I died on the cross. Yes, when you were on earth, there were too many times, too many times when you felt like there were things that separated you from my love, but never, never, ever again. Jesus, I, I think I'm beginning to get it. I mean, all those things in my life, they really did work together for good. And remember, I promised you, since the beginning, a good work in you, I would carry it on to completion. Today it is done. It is completed. 
The time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb. The wedding banquet hall is ready. Albert, today I take you as my bride. Today we will consummate our relationship. You and I will be one, one as the Father and I are one, one for all eternity. One for all eternity? You and me, one for all eternity? All eternity? Hallelujah! You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive honor and power and glory. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Hallelujah! Amen. All right, in response, let's stand and sing the church's one foundation. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth. Her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy and to one hope she presses with every grace endued. Mid toil and tribulation and tumult of her war, she waits the consummation of peace forevermore. Till with the vision glorious, her longing eyes are blessed, and the great church victorious shall be the church at rest. Please be seated. Now is the time for offering. Offering is the divine responsibility of Christians. Uh, so if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, uh, please just help us by passing, passing the offering bag along uh, without offering. Thank you. Uh, so while I invite the ushers to come and collect the offering, let's sing our final song, Thanks to God. to God for my Redeemer, thanks for all Thou dost provide. Thanks for times now but a memory, thanks for Jesus by my side. Thanks for pleasant balmy springtime, thanks for dark and stormy fall. Thanks for tears by now forgotten, thanks for peace within my soul. Thanks for prayers that thou hast answered, thanks for what thou dost deny. Thanks for storms that I have weathered, thanks for all thou dost supply. Thanks for pain and thanks for pleasure. Thanks for comfort in despair. 
Thanks for grace that none can measure. Thanks for love beyond compare. Please stand. Thanks for roses by the wayside. Thanks for thorns their stems contain. Thanks for home and thanks for fireside. Thanks for hope that sweet refrain. Thanks for joy and thanks for sorrow. Thanks for heavenly peace with thee. Thanks for hope in the tomorrow. Thanks through all eternity. Let's pray for the offering. Lord God, who is beyond all praising, Lord, today we come before you and we give glory to your name, Lord. We recognize that you are the God of heaven and earth who created all things. So, Lord, we can indeed there's no way that we can that our monetary offering or anything we give can be of any what's the word material value to you, I suppose. Uh, but Lord. Uh, today's offering uh, may it be symbolic of our desire to give everything to you, Lord. May it represent our desire to give our voices to praise you. May it be rep uh, representative of our desire to give uh, all the glory to you. May it be representative of our desire to give our lives to you so that we may do your will on earth. And so, Lord, we pray that this money we give today, this monetary donation, may be used for the building of your church and the spreading of your ministry. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing for doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now may our God and Father himself, and make, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before God and Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all the saints. Amen. 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 Please be seated and have a moment of silent prayer. Okay, folks, once again, welcome to join our Sunday service. Okay, may our Lord lead you, guide you in this coming week, and glorify his name.